Hello children, welcome back. We discussed about uh, various number systems and different numbers as well as Euclid division lemma and uh, some applications of Euclid division lemma in the previous class. Now, we will discuss about the next level of this chapter that is coming to the very first thing is fundamental theorem of arithmetic. So, what is this fundamental theorem of arithmetic? Fundamental theorem of arithmetic means, for example, if you consider any composite number, for example, I have a composite number 12, right? This composite number can be factorized into, suppose 2 into 6 is equal to 12, or else you can write it as 2 into 2 into 3 is equal to 12. What does this mean? You can write it as 2 square into 3 to the power of 1, which is equal to 12. So, what we did here, we factorized a composite number as the product of different prime numbers in a unique way. That is what is called fundamental theorem of arithmetic. So, fundamental theorem of arithmetic states that every composite number for example, you take a composite number n, every composite number can be expressed as product of different prime numbers in a unique way. See here, 2 is a prime number, 3 is a prime number, right? So, you can write it as p1 to the power of some alpha 1 into p2 to the power of alpha 2 into p3 to the power of alpha 3 and so on, okay? This is what you can call it as fundamental theorem of arithmetic, okay? Every composite number can be uniquely expressed as product of primes. P1, P2, P3 and so on, they are different prime numbers. Alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3, they are their respective powers. Like you see, 2 is the power of 2 and 1 is the power of 3. Like that, every composite number can be uniquely expressed in this. That is called fundamental theorem of arithmetic, okay? And now, Coming to the next concept of this uh, real number system, rational numbers we had already discussed and coming to irrational numbers. So, what do you mean by an irrational number? We had a discussion about irrational numbers a lot in grade 9, if I am not wrong and we discussed about different kinds of irrational numbers also. But here in our grade 10, we have some questions like, you have to prove that root 2 is an irrational number. So, how do you prove that root 2 is an irrational number? To prove that root 2 is an irrational number, definitely we will try to find out the value of root 2 by using that short division method, whatever it is. Then, we will get like 1.4147 something and so on. Then, since the digits are not repeating and not terminating, so that we conclude that therefore, root 2 is neither terminating nor repeating, that is why it is an irrational number. But it is not the systematic proof because we are generalizing that. We should not generalize to give one statement, we should prove that statement. Okay? So, in order to prove the statement, root 2 is an irrational number. In mathematics, we have two kinds of proofs to prove any mathematical statement. Those two proofs are, one is direct method of proof, and the second one is indirect method of proof. So, these are methods of proofs. What are those two methods of proofs? One is direct method of proof and the second one is indirect method of proof. What is this direct method and indirect method of proof? For example, you are given a statement like in ninth class, you proved so many statements in the concept of circles, triangles and all. For example, there is a concept of circles I am taking that the angle subtended by an arc at the center is double the angle subtended by the same arc at any point on the remaining part of the circle. That is one statement. So, in order to prove that statement, we will definitely have to draw the figure and moreover, what is the information given in the statement and what are we going to prove. So, we will write in this direct method of proof what is given and then what is RTP and then if figure is required, we will draw the figure and then proof. So, 
these are the logical sequence of steps to be followed in proving any mathematical statement by direct method of proof. But whereas in this indirect method of proof, we should begin with the hypothesis here we begin with the hypothesis and through some logical sequence of steps we may conclude with the we may end up with the conclusion but here in this indirect method of proof we assume that our result is wrong what is our result here root 2 is an irrational number let us assume that our result root 2 is an irrational number is wrong by some logical sequence of steps we arrive at a contradiction what do you mean by contradiction wrong result we arrive at a wrong result this is the wrong result is only because of our wrong assumption therefore our assumption root 2 is an irrational number is not an irrational number is wrong then what is right root 2 is an irrational number is right so in order to prove this kind of statements we use this indirect method of proof i repeat what is the difference between direct and indirect method of proofs in this direct method of proof, we begin with the given statement and through some logical sequence of steps, we may end up with the conclusion. But in this indirect method of proof, we assume that our result is wrong and then through some logical sequence of steps, we arrive at a contradiction. This contradiction is only because of our wrong assumption. Therefore, whatever our, our assumption is, that is wrong. Therefore, whatever the statement given, that is correct. Now, let us see how are we going to prove this root 2 is an irrational number or root 3 is an irrational number by our indirect method of proof. Okay? Let me write the question here. What is the question? That is prove that root 2 is irrational. Otherwise, root 2 is an irrational number. Anything is okay. So, we follow indirect method of proof to prove this root 2 is an irrational number. Okay? Let me start. That is, by this indirect method of proof, I will write by indirect method of proof. Okay? By indirect method of proof, assume that, assume that root 2 is an irrational number root 2 as an irrational number is wrong right so let us assume that root 2 is a rational number because we are assuming that root 2 is not irrational since it is not irrational then it is rational therefore root 2 is a rational number correct and we know about a rational number that every rational number can be expressed in the form of p divided by q. Right? Let root 2 is equal to p divided by q. Here you need to mention one very important and logical point and technical point in order to prove this statement is where the HCF of p comma q should be 1. What does the meaning of this statement HCF of p comma q equal to 1? That is the fraction p divided by q in its lowest terms. For example, I am taking one fraction 3 divided by 27. 3 divided by 27 is not in lowest terms or not in standard form because 3 and 27 can be simplified further. Then if you find the HCF of 3 comma 27, you will get 3 but not 20 but not 1. If the HCF of two numbers is equal to 1, then only that fraction is said to be in simplest form. right? So, 3 divided by 27 is not that simplest fraction. That is why I have mentioned here HCF of P comma Q is equal to 1. Yes, let us move on. Okay, Let root 2 is equal to P divided by Q. When root 2 is equal to P divided by Q, what should be done next? While simplifying, you will have to square it on both the sides. Otherwise, you first cross multiply square it on both the sides. Otherwise, square it on both the sides and then cross multiply. Anything is okay. Now, p into 1 is equal to p which is equal to root 2 into q is root 2 q. Now, you square it on both the sides. So, that p whole square is equal to root 2 q whole square. What is the value of p whole square which is equal to p square? 
root 2 q whole square is equal to 2 q square let it be for example the first information here we need to understand one thing the relationship between p square and q square p square is a square number which is equal to 2 times q square means p square is a multiple of 2 right now you take any square number which is a multiple of 2 for example if i take 4 yes 4 is a square number because it can be written as 2 square and 4 is also a multiple of 2 because 4 can be written as 2 into 2 for example if i take p square is equal to 4 because 4 is equal to 2 into something that something is equal to 2 then p square is equal to 4 then p is equal to how much 2 that 2 can also be written as 2 into something right see if p square is a multiple of 2 then p would also be the multiple of 2 right and moreover this is a fact that it is not only true for 2 it is true for any number suppose if p square is a multiple of 3 then p is also multiple of 3 if p square is a multiple of 5 p is also multiple of 5 so that is true for any number that is why p square is equal to 2 q square means p square is a multiple of 2 then p would also be a multiple of 2 so therefore i will write since p square is a multiple of 2 therefore p would also be a multiple of 2 p would also be multiple of 2 means can i take p is equal to multiple of 2 is p is equal to some 2m where m can be any positive integer because p is a multiple of 2 right when you substitute p is equal to 2m in the first equation then first equation is going to be p square p is equal to 2m right so 2m whole square is equal to 2 into q square is q square 2m whole square is equal to 4m square is equal to 2q square can we cancel 1 2 and 4 here yes 2 1s are 2 2 2s are 4 so finally we get here q square is equal to 2 into m square is 2m square so what did you observe here again q square is equal to 2m square q square is equal to 2m square means what q square is a multiple of 2 if q square is a multiple of 2 then we can say that q is also a multiple of 2 so similarly we can say that q is equal to some 2 into n where n is any positive integer right so this is the value of q and this is the value of p let us consider the value of p divided by q if i consider p divided by q p is equal to 2m and q is equal to 2n now i need to identify one thing that i should not cancel 2 and 2 here because according to the definition of p divided by q the hcf of p comma q is equal to 1 but here i got 2m by 2n the hcf of 2m and 2n is not equal to 1 which is equal to 2 so the hcf of p comma q here i got it as 2 but not is equal to 1 that is what is the wrong result i arrive at a contradiction why is this contradiction because of my wrong assumption what was my wrong assumption assuming that root 2 is a rational number but here i got the hcf of here i would write so hcf of 2m comma 2n is equal to 2 but not is equal to 1 since the hcf here i got it as 2 instead of 1 this is just because of uh, my wrong assumption therefore i should say that this is a contradiction therefore my assumption is wrong therefore root 2 is an irrational number this is one way of proving root 2 is irrational number or root 3 is irrational number or anything this method of proof is said to be indirect method of proof so i repeat there are two methods of proofs to prove a mathematical statement one is direct method of proof and second one is indirect method of proof by using direct method of proof we start with the given statement and through some logical sequence of steps we may end up with the conclusion but in indirect method of proof we begin with the assumption that is assuming that our result is wrong 
through some logical sequence of steps we may arrive at a contradiction that is the contradiction is only due to our assumption therefore our assumption is wrong so we used indirect method of proof to prove root 2 is an irrational number so we have set of problems in our exercise 1.3 depending on the same concept you people will have to work on these problems so whatever the problem is given you can easily figure out see it is root 2 is an irrational number so that 2 is coming here if root 3 is an irrational number same process same number same letters but instead of 2 3 will come that's it nothing more than that okay so this is about proving root 2 is irrational number or root 3 is irrational number so this is about the concept of irrational numbers so as we discussed earlier for example you are given some fractions those fractions are like 15 divided by 4 8 divided by 3 and then 5 divided by 8 so these are some different fractions and if you want to convert them into decimal forms you need to perform division method right so by using this division method you can find out the decimal form of 15 divided by 4 as well as 8 divided by 3 and also 5 divided by 8 let us try to understand this uh, for example 4 4 are 16 so that 4 3 are 12 and then 15 minus 12 is equal to 3 so 4 7 are 28 and then 2 0 20 4 5 are 20 so 3.75 is the decimal representation of 15 divided by 4 8 divided by 3 again when you divide 8 by 3 then it is going to be 3 2 are 6 point 8 minus 6 is equal to 2 means 20 and then 3 6 are 18 again 20 3 6 are 18 3 6 are 18 and so on so you can write this one as 2.6 bar right coming to 5 divided by 8 which is going to be 5 is smaller than 8 obviously this is 0 point and then that would be 50 and um, you can take the nearest multiple of uh, multiple of 8 which is nearer to 50 that is 8 5 is uh, 40 8 6 are 48 so 6 and then 50 minus 48 is equal to 2 2 0 that is 20 and then 8 2 are 16 so 20 minus 16 is equal to 4 means 40 8 5 are 40 and for example let me take one more fraction like 2 divided by 5 if i take 2 divided by 5 then it is going to be 0. Point. now the 2 will become 20 5 how much are 20 5 4 are 20 once you observe these are different kinds of fractions as well as their respective decimal forms out of all these decimal forms we can identify some decimal forms are terminating terminating are nothing but stopping there is no digit coming after that and there is no digit is repeating those kind of decimal representations are 3.75 can be called as terminating decimal 0.625 also can be called as terminating decimal and 0.4 can also be called as a terminating decimal but whereas 2.666 and so on what do you call this kind of decimal form yes this is called non terminating but repeating decimal form so 2.666 and so on that is nothing but 2.6 bar what is that 6 bar that bar indicates that particular digit or those particular digits repeat so these kind of decimal representations are called non terminating but repeating decimal now coming to the point 15 by 4 8 by 3 5 by 8 2 by 5 all these are different rational numbers so that here we can understand one thing that every rational number can be expressed as a decimal form so some of them are terminating decimals and some of them are non terminating but repeating decimals we have one more decimal representation also you know what do you call that that is neither terminating nor repeating decimal form what is that neither terminating nor repeating decimal form what is that form of type that is for example i would write 0.313233 34 and so on if you once observe this 
zero point three one three three two three 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 four and so on and so on means it is non terminating. Is it repeating? There is no digit repeating there. And moreover, you cannot represent this zero point three one three two three three and so on with the help of this recurring notation. So these kind of numbers will not be considered as rational numbers. So these numbers are already called as irrational numbers. We had a discussion about this in grade nine, in fact. Okay. So irrational numbers are nothing but the numbers are in the decimal form, which are neither terminating nor repeating decimals. But now we are discussing about uh, terminating decimals, otherwise non-terminating but repeating decimals. These are of the form p divided by q, means they are rational numbers. So that every rational number can be expressed in a decimal form. They are either terminating decimals or non-terminating but repeating decimals. Okay, but here the point is eight divided by three is equal to two point six 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 and so on. I just don't want to perform division, but I want to know whether that given fraction is a terminating decimal or non-terminating decimal without exactly dividing the numerator by the denominator. Is it possible? So let's think about that. Once you observe the denominators of terminating decimals, so this is one terminating decimal, and this is one terminating decimal, and this is one more terminating decimal. In these three terminating decimals, if we once observe the denominators, here the denominator is four. What are the factors of four? They are two into two is equal to four. And coming to this denominator eight, so what are the factors of eight? They are two to the power of three. And coming to two divided by five, here the denominator is five. It means five to the power of one. Yes, I understand one thing here that if a fraction gives a terminating decimal. Definitely, the denominator should be in terms of two and five only. But there is no other number involved in the factors of the denominator. Then we can say that that fraction gives terminating decimal. Otherwise, it always represents a non-terminating but repeating decimal. See here, if you observe any kind of fraction, then easily we can estimate. About the fraction that this fraction gives terminating decimal or non-terminating but repeating decimal. If the denominator of a fraction, see here the denominator is four eight five. The denominator of a fraction is having the factors two and five. Other than two and five, if any other factor involved in this, then it will not be a terminating decimal. So that I am going to write and give you one. Generalized formula for p by q to be a terminating decimal, right? If you have a fraction like p divided by q, okay? So p divided by q, where q can be expressed as two to the power of something into five to the power of something, where those two somethings are whole numbers are non-negative integers. M comma n belong to W. Then this fraction always gives a terminating decimal. Otherwise, it is a non-terminating decimal. Okay. So we classify the decimal representations of rational numbers as follows. Once have a look. Rational numbers. All rational numbers are in the form of p by q. Okay. So rationals are in the form of p by q. Of course, you have That condition for p and q both are integers, and q should not be zero. And moreover, uh, the greatest common divisor is divisor of p and q is going to be one. Okay, it means the fraction should be in simplest form by default. Okay, then it gives two kinds of decimal forms. What are those two kinds of decimal forms? They are terminating decimals, terminating. terminating decimals as well as what is the second one second one is non terminating but repeating decimals non terminating but repeating decimals
right so which of them are terminating decimals and which of them are non terminating but repeating decimals so in p divided by q in p divided by q where the denominator q can be expressed as 2 to the power of m into 5 to the power of n where m comma n are any two whole numbers whole numbers are nothing but it can be from 0 degrees 0 onwards ok. So, this is what is terminating decimal and non terminating but repeating decimals will be like p divided by q where q cannot be expressed as 2 to the power of something into 5 to the power of something where m comma n are whole numbers. Suppose if you cannot express the denominator in this form like 2 power something into 5 power something then it will not be a terminating decimal it is non terminating decimal. So, with the help of this you can easily identify the given fraction whether it gives a terminating decimal or non terminating but repeating decimal or not. So, this is all about our real numbers we discussed in real numbers what are various forms of number systems various number systems in, in brief as well as we discussed about natural numbers, whole numbers, integers, rationals, irrationals as well as real numbers along with complex numbers also. And we discussed about Euclid's division lemma and then how to find HCF and um, LCM of two numbers by various methods and moreover what is the relationship between HCF and LCM of two numbers and moreover how to find HCF of two numbers by Euclid division lemma and then we discussed about how to prove root 2 or root 3 these kind of numbers are irrational numbers by indirect method of proof and finally, we discussed about a rational number and decimal representation of rational numbers when a fraction gives terminating decimal and when a fraction gives non terminating but repeating decimals. So, hope you understand. Thank you.